Alrighty guys, so the fun part. Let's go through some of the many products you can use to treat cockroaches. Now we use five main types of products when it comes to treating cockroaches. So at the front here we've got our gel baits. We use most commonly an insecticide liquid spray. We've got our dust, like the permethrin dust. We also have the aerosol sprays and of course we use occasionally the monitoring boards. Now we may not require all types of products for any given job but typically we would use at least three of the five. It really depends on the type of pest and the level of infestation. Another example could be the monitoring boards tend to only work with the bad infestation. But let's go through all the products anyway and then you can decide for yourself what works best for you. Now before we get into the DIY products and what you can buy yourself at home I wanted to go into a bit more detail about the products that we use and that way we can compare the two so that you can understand the difference between professional products and the off-the-shelf stuff you can get yourself. So I'll start with the products that we would use first most often with a service would be our gel baits. Now the reason for that is the best way to start a service would be to use our torch. So you want to use a powerful torch and you would want to investigate and look for any signs of pests uh, any signs where they could harbour those sorts of things so when we're doing that it's normally a great time to apply the cockroach gels now they all have uh, similar concept but they have different active ingredients in them so uh, we want to use it depending on the type of cockroach and the level of infestation. Now the way the gel baits work is they're an attractant. So the idea is to put them in inconspicuous areas, usually in wet areas like the kitchen and bathroom. Um, so for example, in behind the hinges of the cupboards where fingers can't get to, where they're not going to be noticed. Um, and when there's cockroaches in the close vicinity, they're going to be attracted to the gel. So the flip side of the gel baits is if there isn't really a cockroach problem at the time, uh, they will tend to dry out. So they won't really be effective uh, for a long term. It's really only going to be if there's an immediate issue that gel baits work best. So the next step we would look at after we've done the gel bait placement, we would typically look at doing an internal border spray or a perimeter spray with a liquid insecticide. Now this is where there's a whole range of different products and it can be overwhelming. I wanted to show you two main products that we would typically use. So the Temperate 75 is a fantastic product um, as a standard go-to. Um, and the reason for that is if there's not a huge infestation, it's a really effective product in that regard. When you have more of an infestation like a German cockroach issue, uh, that's when the Seclira WSG is fantastic as it's more of a non-repellent. So ultimately what we want to look at when we're looking at liquid insecticides is, is it a deterrent or a repellent product or is it a non-repellent? Because uh, that can make a huge difference as to the effect. Now what that means is if it's a deterrent product, the cockroaches may sense that it's there and they may actually avoid the uh, area where we've applied it um, and it will obviously not be as effective. So non-repellent could be great because they'll continue to go over that area um, and have a lot more success killing a lot more cockroaches. So what you'll see with the Temperate is it has two active ingredients in it. So we've got the imidacloprid and the beta cyfluthrin. When it comes to the Seclira, we've got the Dino Tefuron. So they both are two products that uh, you can't get DIY, but they are really effective um, and they work differently to your Bifanthrins or your Deltamethrin. Now, if we need to take it to the next level, another product that we can use are our IGRs or our insect growth regulators. Now, these are commonly used when there is a bad infestation. The problem when there is a lot of cockroaches is they can either build immunity or even just not die straight away and so they'll continue to breed and, and the cycle will continue to go on and we can't get on top of the problem. Insect growth regulators do exactly that. They affect the way that they breed or that they molt and so it can be really effective when the infestation is really bad. Now the next product is everyone's favourite go-to. Everyone's got a can of fly spray or an aerosol at home that they want to use. So aerosols can be great for particularly flushing out of harbourage areas, so in cracks and crevices, in behind the fridge, in behind uh, areas where we can't physically get to. Uh, now, it's similar to the insecticide liquids um, in that we really want to look at the active ingredient. Is it a repellent? Is it a non-repellent product um, as to how effective it might be? And of course, the monitoring boards, you can get, uh, normally they'll be sticky boards, so they'll have a lure or an attractant, which is not a chemical, and cockroaches will be attracted towards that area, and they'll get stuck to the sticky boards. So, as I mentioned before, they're not really that great if you're not having a big problem, but they can be great to monitor the level of infestation in those problem areas. Now, last but not least is your dust. Now, the dust is the one thing that I have not found commonly able to be purchased DIY, for example, from Bunnings. Your permethrin dust is really effective in your roof space and your wall cavities. Um, now, what I, as I've said in previous videos, uh, it really the success of the treatment is based on how well you can apply the products. When it comes to your dust, 
you do need to use uh, a proper duster or piece of equipment that's actually going to get the dust throughout the roof space or the wall cavity. So once you start to look at all the expensive equipment that you need to purchase, um, it becomes an expensive exercise and not worthwhile. So typically you would look at all the other products DIY um, and permethrin would be one that you probably wouldn't be able to get to. Hi guys, hope you're enjoying the DIY series. If you are, it would mean a lot to us if you can give us a like and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We make content here every week. Cheers guys.